that game was so bizarre. I'm sick to my stomach. I truly am sick to my stomach with what I just watched. That game was miserable. What is going on, everyone? This this pisses me off. It truly pisses me off because the Phillies, the Phillies are trying to win baseball games. The Phillies are trying to stay in the wild card race. The Phillies are trying to make the playoffs. And they fall in the 15th inning to a trash bag team like the Chicago White Sox 4-3. to Now, before I really roast apart Gabe Kapler, because trust me, I will do that because I believe that this game was arguably his worst game of his managerial career. He made horrendous decisions. But before I roast Gabe Kapler, you do need to look at a big problem today, and it was the offense. You had bases juiced opportunities so many times, and guess what? They didn't execute. They didn't score runs. That's a problem. That's a problem. You're talking about early in the game having a chance. You're talking about having two chances super late in this ball game to blow it wide open. And they couldn't against the Chicago White Sox? That's so embarrassing. It really is. Let's take a look at the heat of the order. The middle of the lineup. Reese Hoskins, 1 for 5. Bryce Harper, 0 for 6. That's right. Bryce Harper sucked today. Y you can't be giving us that type of performance in a game against the Chicago White Sox. He needs to step up and make something happen. Absolutely. I'm getting on Bryce Harper today. That needs to change. 0 for 6 needs to change. JT Romuto, 1 for 7. That's the middle of our lineup, guys. That's the middle of the lineup not producing. And it goes on from there because Scott Kingery goes 0 for 6. And if you even go deeper, Adam Hazley goes one for seven. A combined three for th 31. Three for 31. And those are our three, four, five, six, and seven hitters. I can't believe it. So, the huge problem in this game? The offense. Is that fair? I'm acknowledging the fact that the offense failed multiple, 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 multiple times. I'm acknowledging that before I roast Gabe Kapler. Because if you ask me what was the biggest problem today, was it the offense or Gabe Kapler? The biggest problem was offense. But I can look at what Gabe Kapler did today and say, this is a description of what he is. These are the type of decisions that he makes in his... <laughs> in his position, and they're not good. They're not good. I almost forgot that Vargas even played this game. It was so wild and so nuts. Vargas did okay in his start. Six and a third, five hits, five Ks. Uh, this is what you're getting, a six-inning pitcher and, you know, and, and the fact that he throws so slow, it might even be beneficial because it's it's almost as if these pitchers don't even, or these, these batters don't even know what to do when the pitchers are throwing so slow. Let's dive into Gabe Kapler's decision making today. And of course it results in <laughs> Vince Velasquez being a stud, but we'll get to that. Gabe Kapler, it started with me in the ninth. He put out Juan Nicasio. Before I even saw Parker pitch in this game, I was texting my buddies and I said, didn't Parker close before? We pick him up, he's added to the bullpen, he closed before. He's used to late game situations. He ended up pitching well on extra innings, but I stated this before I even saw him come into the game. He's someone who's been in the position before. I figured it would be a chance for him to go in there and try and close the baseball game out because Hector Neris is suspended. But we put out Juan Nicasio, who's not a closer. And my opinion on Juan Nicasio, everyone rips him apart, he stinks. He's serviceable. He's not a closer, but if he's in the 5th, 6th, 7th inning, he's serviceable. But he shouldn't be in this type of game that late, no. But anyway, he ends up blowing it past some guys. He was in a battle. It was a long at-bat for the second out. He did allow a double, but he battled throwing 95, 96. Got the second out with the man on second base. And we switched to Alvarez. Switched to Alvarez, and, and he ended up blowing it. Blowing it. To, to a guy who just got called up from AAA. You can't make this stuff up. 
In my opinion, Parker should have closed the game. But fine, if you put Juan Nicasio in, I think I'm just leaving Juan Nicasio in at that point. He did allow the double, but he was throwing 95-96, and he just really worked for a big time out. I don't know. Analytics. Analytics. In the 13th inning, this is where Gabe Kapler's toughest decision came. The harshest move he made today. And we had Zach Eflin on second base. Two outs. With Reese Hoskins up. Walk-off situation. He put Vince Velasquez on second base. Now you find out after, in a pinch running situation, you find out after Zach Eflin went up to Gabe Kapler and stated, I'm sore, but I can pitch. Well, understanding our bullpen right now, understanding how many pitchers are banged up, Gabe Kapler couldn't roll the dice with him, so decided to pull him. Put Vince Velasquez out there on second base. What does that mean? It means we have no pitcher. Because Vince Velasquez couldn't go. Ranger Suarez couldn't go, which bothers me, to be honest with you. But that's another story for another time. Reese Hoskins couldn't execute, though. Reese Hoskins wasn't able to knock anyone in there. He let a pitch go right by him, a very hittable pitch. And then he ended up popping up the first base in foul territory. So keep in mind, Reese Hoskins failed to knock someone in in that moment. But you're essentially, as Gabe Kapler, right? You're essentially giving up the game. Now, Zach Eflin, if he's that hurt, if he's that sore, I don't want to see him pitching anytime soon, right? He's that sore. I mean, he's that sore. If he's not feeling good, if his tricep is hurting that bad, I, I, I better not see him pitch soon. He's hurting. He's hurting. Gabe Kapler in his post-game interview was such a joke. Dropping curse words, trying to be this tough guy, but he was also trying to rally the troops, trying to praise their effort. I was so proud of them tonight, he said. I was so proud of how they worked and how hard they played. It's painful we lost, but I'm so proud of how they battled. That's great, Gabe. I don't care about that. I just don't care. You keep talking. You keep talking. Oh, this is what you do. You talk, you talk, you talk. But you don't show the action. Your team doesn't show the action. You lost. You lost the game to the Chicago White Sox when you're in a battle for a playoff spot. That's so cool that you feel great about your team working hard, Gabe. But guess what? It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything in the standings. It means there's an, a, a, another number in the L column. That's what it means. So Gabe Kapler making that decision in the 13th is, is really... Critical. Really critical. Roman Quinn had the pit. Now, Roman Quinn as a whole had a fantastic day. I mean, he had another dinger. He's starting to tear it up. Stole some bases. He was making plays today. Roman Quinn was was uh, was solid. And you got to give credit to Vince Velasquez. Not only did he have that cannon throw at home. He had a cannon throw at home in extra innings to save the game at that moment. He had a diving catch to make it just a one-run game there before we had a chance to tie it up and failed. He also almost threw a second guy out in, in left field. It was bizarre to see. I mean, really, it was so bizarre to watch. The scheme as a whole was nuts. We had our, our outfielder pitching. We had one of our pitchers playing left field and throwing guys out at home, making diving catches. Also, Adam Hazley was a pitcher in college, yet we're throwing Roman Quinn in there. Okay. Once again, not a move that's life-changing here, game-changing, but it's, it's, it's a mindset that confuses me when it comes to Gabe Kapler. Just like all the other ones today. From the ninth inning on, I don't know what the hell Gabe Kapler was doing today. Another thing that pissed me off was Nick Pavetta. Nick Pavetta, with uh, he, in the eighth inning, he allows a triple to start the inning off and gets out of the jam. The run didn't come across home. So he gives a little fist bump screaming. And I tweet, I said, Nick Pavetta, relax, bud. I can't stand him. He's a hate the face to me. Everyone's saying, let the kids play, tweeting at me. Why can't he show emotion? If pitchers can throw at batters, why can't pitchers throw emotion? If they can bat flip. It's not about pitchers showing emotion. I'm all for pitchers showing emotion. I'm not all for Nick Pavetta showing emotion. Because he cries. He cries like a baby when he gets pulled as a starter. 
But in the bullpen, he's trying to be Mr. Energy Fist Pump. Nah, he's a hate the face to me. He can't do anything, right? He could throw a perfect game, and I'd, and I'd bitch about it somehow. Because I can't stand him. But regardless, that's me on, you know, my personal problem with Nick Pavetta. As a whole, this game is disturbing. Really. Not only is it early as hell in the morning because it goes through 15 innings, but it, it was embarrassing. It was just embarrassing how the whole game played out from her offense to Gabe Kapler. It, it's bad. And to Gabe Kapler's post-game press conference, which was laughable as well. I want to know your thoughts down below, but the big problem with me is the offense today. But you have to look at Gabe Kapler and say his decision-making was poor. That has to be valued. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.